I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions, and yes, I'm wearing glasses, I'm in front of the computer, it's spreadsheet time. Today we're going to be talking about the comparison between two methods of calculating volt rise, one using millivolt per amp meter straight out of AS3008, and the other one using cable impedance and the differences and why they occur and why it's important. So hit that subscription button, let's get stuck into it. And as you know, I'm such a horrible typer, so I basically made all the fonts white. And here we go, we'll just go through this here, so. Now, in this particular method, we are using the millivolt per amp meter method. So we've got first position, second position, cable size, distance in meters, the voltage, and this is three phase example, so it's 400, the total inverter output through the cable in kilowatts, current through the cable, minimum cable that can take the current, the D rating factor, just for a bit of interest, the minimum cable that can take current with D rating, the cable size actually used, the volt drop per millivolt per amp meter, so the volt drop, which is a millivolt per amp meter factor, the max volt rise for the system, the individual volt rises per run, in volts, the percentage volt rise and the cumulative volt rise. So we'll just go through them um, slowly. So effectively, point of, the first position or, uh, is the point of supply always. And then the second position in this case is the MSB. We're using 95 mil cable, okay? And there's a drop down list and we've talked about data validation using lists previously, so I won't go into too much detail. Okay, the distance in meters, this is user input here totally, so 50, 60, 70. The voltage, well it's 400 volts, three phase, nominal. Now the total inverter output through the cable, in this case it's 100 kilowatts, and then with this calculation over here, and uh, we'll just focus in on that calculation. So effectively, what's in G3, being the output in kilowatts of the inverter, times a thousand to, to turn that into watts and then divide by 400 volt in brackets sorry the 400 volt normal voltage times the square root of three which ends up being 1.732 the minimum cable that can take the current so this is a bit of a check to see that the current that you're talking about what is a minimum cable size and this is based on um, table seven column 24. now here we have table seven and column 24 and we, if you can see, we're talking about 140, uh, 144 amps or so, and you can see uh, a 50 mil will take 144 amps in solid stranded uh, in an underground. And this is the, this is the actual table reference by AS4777. Uh, now, we're talking about slightly over 144 amps, so you, you have to go up to the next one, 70 mil, and that can take 180 amps in this particular case. So getting back to the spreadsheet. So what I've done here is I've created a VLOOKUP, don't we love? So if we focus in on the VLOOKUP, you can see it's looking at what's in H3, which is the current. Then it's referencing um, a table, so I'll slowly come over here to AD3. So basically it's looking at AD3 to AF22 and you can see, so it's looking at those three columns. Now, it's looking in the third column because it wants to extract the um, correct cable. And if we come down here, we can see the 70 mil cable and there's 100 and 180 amps. I throw in a derating factor that if you want to derate the cable for the current current capacity, in this case, it, if I derate by 0.7, it says I have to go to 95 mil. And um, that also involves a calculation, another V lookup. And the cable size used, we use 95 mil. Now, when I select the 95 mil, it, another VLOOKUP effectively looks in what is in L3 
and references what's in AO4. So we go all the way to AO4 and looks down to AP23. All the way down here. And that'll pull back a millivolt per amp meter figure. So you can see here, 95 mil will pull 0.449 millivolts per amp meter. So the lookup functions are really great. I'm using VLOOKUP, but you can also use XLOOKUP if you've got a newer version of Excel. It's a function I use quite a bit, especially when, it's, when we're talking about cables, uh, current carrying capacity and the volt rise uh, situation and those kind of calculations. So let's get back to it. So we know the, the millivolt per amp meter there is uh, 0.4490 because it's 95 mil cable. The max volt rise is eight volts because we're talking about a 400 volt nominal voltage and we're allowed a maximum of 2%. So 400 volts times 2% equates to eight volts. So all these runs cannot exceed eight volts. Now, the volt rise over that particular run is 3.24 volts, and I've converted that to a percentage, and then I've done a cumulative figure. Obviously, this is the first run, so the cumulative figure is gonna be the same as the percentage volt rise. Now, the next run is from the MSB to the secondary protection board. Still using 95 mil, this time we've used 20 meters, that's the run. It's gonna be the same situation as the run from the PS, from the point of supply to the MSB. The same millivolt per meter, but the volt rise is gonna be less because obviously it's a shorter run, it's less. So if I change that to uh, say 50 meters as well, you'd see um, it's exactly the same. Uh, figure, but the issue is, can you see down here on the cumulative volt rise, it's gone over 2%. Now, I'll change that back to 20. Remember, it's a maximum of 2% volt rise. That is the that's allowable under the current Australian and New Zealand standards. So the, the final run is the secondary protection board to the inverter. We're using 16 mil, 20 meters, uh, 400 volt nominal voltage, it's a 27 kilowatt inverter. And uh, the, you may have multiple inverters, but this is the largest capacity inverter that's furthest away. And the current through that cable is nearly 39 amps. Now it's saying I can use six mil. Um, I put in a derating factor of 0.9, it still can use six mil, but I'm using 16 mil. Because if I used, if I used um, six mil, let's look at the volt calculation here we go so you can see I've gone up to five a little over five volts on the volt rise and that's pushing me over the 2.3 and you shouldn't be using six mil so I'll go back to 16 16 mil there we go now so we've got a 50 meter run from the point of supply to the MSB using 95 mil we've got a 20 meter run from the MSB to the, to the secondary protection board using 95 mil at 20 meter run, and the secondary protection board to inverter, we're using 16 mil at 20 meter run, and we've got a total volt rise of 1.6. Now, the other method is using cable impedance, a slightly larger figure. So let's make sure we've got the same figures in here. We've got point of supply to the main switchboard, we're using XLPE, we're using 95 mil. Can the cable carry the current, yes or no? In this case, it's, it's a manual, you'll have to manually check yourself, uh, unlike the one up here, which does it automatically. So we're talk, talking about a current of 144.34, so accurate to two decimal spots, so slightly diff, very slightly different from the other. And we're talking about a run of 50 metres, yes, that's correct, 20 metres, 20 metres. Now. You can see the, the volt rise. Let's have a look at the volt rise and the point of supply in MSB. 0 0.7750 compared to 0.8101%. Now, cutting to the chase, 
Using the millivolt per amp meter method with the referenced tables in um, AS3008, you're getting a slightly higher volt rise figure of 1.607. So with this AC cable schedule here, you're talking about referencing the cables impedance with the calculations to do the volt rise. So for instance, over here, the impedance of the 95 square mil cable is 0.248 ohms. Uh, and it's slightly higher, I believe, than the resistance, yes. So because we're talking um, AC, the cable impedance is the figure. If we were talking DC, it would be simply the cable resistance. So we're talking cable impedance when we're talking about AC. Now, the calculation here, the VLOOKUP, is pretty complicated, but let's have a bit of a look. And we have covered this in a previous presentation. So effectively, we're looking at what's in H4, the 95 mil cable. We're going across and looking at uh, two columns, V to W. We're looking in the second column, and we're multiplying that by the square root of three, three phase, and then we're looking at the actual run, and then we're looking at the current, and we're multiplying that by 1,000, and then we're dividing that back into the nominal voltage to get a percentage. Okay? And then doing the same thing. So you can see the difference here. So we were looking at 95 mil cable, and we can see that at a conductor temperature of 75 degrees C, using single core insulated and sheathed copper conductor, we're getting this figure of 0.449. Now, as the cable gets bigger, you can see the millivolt per meter uh, rating drops. Now, if I went down and used a, a cable at 60 degrees, you can see that's, that's dropped. So this is a fairly, this is not the worst case scenario figure, but it's, um, it's probably an average figure, and this is why it is referenced in AS4777 when you're talking about calculating the volt, uh, volt rise. Now the other figure is the um, cable current carrying capacity, which is also referenced here in uh, Table 7 of the current AS3008, and you can see that the 95 mil cable can hold 217 amps, uh, in a, when it's being installed in an underground wiring enclosure using solid stranded. So you can see. Now, if we came across here and let's said completely surrounded by thermal ins insulation over here, they don't even have a figure for 95 on the copper here. They do when it comes to partially surrounded by thermal insulation. And you can see, look at the current carrying capacity has come down considerably from 100, from 217 to 147. This is because this particular installation uh, means that the ability of the cable to dispel heat is severely impeded, therefore reducing its current carrying capacity. Let's get back to the spreadsheet. So, using the, milli, the reference millivolt per amp meter for the cable in question, we're getting a slightly higher volt rise calculation compared to the um, situation where we're uh, using cable impedance. It's an interesting one. And if I started doing some derating here, let's say I derated here, this, let's due to uh, installation uh, considerations or location, other cables, it's, I go to point 0.6, um, it says I have to use 120 mil. So I come back over here and I'm, I have to change that to 120 mil. So it's really, and obviously the volt rise uh, comes down because we've gone up another cable size. With these calculations, there's two important things to look at. Can the existing cable carry the current? And more importantly, can the existing cable in the particular way it's being installed, what it's next to where it is, can it carry that current? Can after you derating 
the current current capacity of that cable, can it carry the current? Really, really important. And also, how you calculate volt rise plays a big role in the, in the, the actual outcome. So when you're doing your um, volt rise calculations, either set up a spreadsheet similar to this, or maybe a bit more complicated that takes more things into consideration, or manually go through Ace 3008 for each of your cable runs and working it out accurately, especially if you're coming up towards the 2%. Thanks for watching this riveting spreadsheet presentation on the meth two different methods of volt rise. One using the millivolt per amp meter method and the other one using the impedance of the cable. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, or any way I can make these spreadsheets more entertaining, or entertaining at all, please hit that subscription button. Bye for now.